Ryobi 18 volt light. Excuse me, Ryobi automatic emergency backup light. Today we're going to build a do-it-yourself battery-operated floodlight. This could be used for camping, work, all sorts of different things along those lines. But what's really special about this one is the fact that it will automatically power on during a blackout. That's done simply by making use of a DC power supply and a simple 12 volt relay. Let's get started. First, we'll need an LED floodlight. Uh, this one runs on 9 to 30 volts, and you'll notice it has skinny little wires here because it's just a very low power draw, so we can use skinny wires for our entire project. Next, we'll need a 3D print. Uh, this is something that I made, but I did start from somebody else's design that was something pretty close. Uh, it was already designed to hold the 18 volt Ryobi battery. Uh, I basically just added some holes for a switch, DC input jack, and something to hold the relay in place. The relay is what actually powers the light on in a blackout. You can think of it as a remote switch. It has multiple terminals on it and a spring-loaded design. We'll also need a three-way switch. This gives us the ability to have on, off, and automatic positions. Next, our Keystone 209 battery clips. These will actually connect to the battery to provide the power. They're going to clip directly onto the 3D print, and it should be noted that these need to be soldered. So we'll have to put some small wires into here and solder them in place. We'll need a DC input jack. This one already has some wires on it, and it's designed to fit directly into the hole on the 3D print. We need a DC power supply. This is 12 volts, and it's pretty low power. One amp is more than enough for this project. Just keep in mind that must match the size of the DC input jack. We'll use some quarter inch female quick disconnects. These are for 18 to 22 gauge wire. We're using pretty light wiring for this, and it saves a lot of soldering. Uh, essentially, it makes a lot of our components very plug and play. And we'll need an 18 volt Ryobi battery. I have plenty of these around and chargers to match. For tools on this project, we'll need a soldering iron, solder, wire stripper, and wire crimper. So let's get started with the 3D print. Um, I actually started with a 3D file that somebody else had created that was something similar to what I wanted. And then I brought it into some CAD software and I just modified it a bit. So it's got a hole for our switch. It's got a hole for our DC input. And then I made um, a couple little bits through here that are gonna hold the relay. So what's nice is that automotive style relay just pops right into there and stays in place. Doesn't shake around, helps keep the wiring nice and clean. Um, but I've already got this file for you so you can download it, uh, put it on your 3D printer and print it out yourself. Now, when you're done, there is going to be uh, some support on the bottom here, so we need to take that off first. And that should pull out nice and clean as just uh, one piece. And then, without that there, we can see that on the bottom here, this shape is what's going to hold the battery in place. So, here we've got these clips, they're a little spring-loaded, slide in, squeeze these, push, and it's in place, doesn't come out, squeeze them, pull it out. And if you look up here, this is where the battery terminals are, positive and negative. And so that's where those, uh, those little battery clips are going to go. We're just going to put them right on the plastic so that they push against those battery terminals. Uh, but first, we're gonna solder the wires on there. We can also start here just by putting a couple of the major parts in place so we get a better sense of this. So the relay with this uh, odd little part here down just slides right in here. Uh, when we're all done, we could put, drop a super glue in there or something if we want. The switch is gonna go in this hole. Just put it in, push.
And then our DC port, just these wires come through the hole, push it in, and then on the back side, I'm going to put a lock washer and the nut. Then on the two wires from the DC input connector, we're just going to put one of the little crimp on speed connectors on there and crimp it in place. And then the same thing with the black wire, put on our connector, crimp it in place. Then those two connectors go to the outside two of the relay, like that. Doesn't matter which is which, there's not really any polarity or anything. Okay, now we can do a little soldering. Our battery clip just goes right onto the 3D print. This is the positive side, and I need a wire going from there to the middle of the switch. So I'll just take a piece of wire, stick it in here, make sure I got enough room to reach down here, cut it at that length, and then strip the ends. And then on the other end of the same wire, we will crimp on a connector. And now we'll take that battery clip and we're going to push it on right there. Uh, sometimes these are a little challenging to get on. You have to push, press pretty hard while kind of flexing it a little. Um, sometimes a pliers or some other tool like that uh, helps. So we got our clip here, wire comes down, and then we're just going to plug that right into the middle of the switch. Positive power to middle of switch. Next we need a wire to go from one of the outside connectors from the switch to the relay. So we'll just take another piece of wire, measure it, cut it, and put a spade connector on each end. Put it on the outside connector, and then we're also going to put it on the relay. We'll hook it to that bottom one there. See how having a, a place for the relay makes this a lot easier. You can pop it out, plug things in, get the wires out of the way, put it back in place. Next, we need another wire going from the switch. And we're just going to run it out bare because it's going to connect to another wire in a minute. So again, it's just going to be a strip and crimp another wire. This wire is just kind of going to go out of the way for the moment. Now we also need another wire to go from the middle of the relay back out again just to a bare end. Then this wire is going to go to that middle terminal of the relay.
Now what we're going to do is both these two wires are going to come together. So basically our power is going from the positive to the center of the switch. And in the one position, it goes to the relay, through the relay, and back to this wire. And in the other position, it just goes to this wire. So if we put both these wires together and then connect that to the positive connection on the LED pod, uh, we've got our positive path either off, on through the relay, or just straight on. There's a couple different ways that I connect both these two wires at the same time to the red wire on our LED light. Um, I could just strip all these, twist them together, and solder them. I did that on an earlier project, but I'm thinking uh, maybe if I want to make this removable, um, what I could do is instead strip these two and just crimp them into a uh, insulated spade disconnect, add a matching disconnect on here, and then at least I'd be able to pop them apart uh, might be a little easier to do some things with the lid here. So I'm going to strip those two wires. Next, we're going to need the clip on the negative side of the battery. So we've got our clip, and we'll just need to measure a piece of wire to go from there uh, just to our kind of our wiring area. So something about Something about that long should be okay. Strip the ends, solder the one end to the clip, and crimp on a connector on the other end. I'm thinking, uh, just because that's a red connector, but this is the negative, I think I might put a little piece of black tape over it so I uh, don't confu get confused on the polarity later. There's our negative, there's our positive. I thought I would also mark the positive connector with the pen here so that I didn't get the polarity confused later. Now for the LED light, it does have a mounting bracket that I have to assemble. That's pretty straightforward, but it did take a minute to do. Uh, just putting it in place, adding some bolts, nuts, washers. Uh, the bolts on the side are 3 eighths. And the nut on the bottom here is half inch. So we've got the bracket and everything on the light. I'm now going to mount it to the lid. So that's the top side. So the wires go through the big hole. The bolt goes through the small hole. Washer, lock washer, nut. So now if I put this on, i got to put the wires down through here first, and it kind of snaps in place. But this is kind of a lot of extra wire. I don't need this much, so I think I'm going to cut this, uh, cut it a bit shorter. You know, the main thing to remember here is that I still need to match up our connectors. So here's to our positive, so we need Positive is going to get one like this. So our positive male connector is going to go to our positive female connector. And then on the negative side, we've got a female connector. So we're going to need an insulated male connector for the negative on the light. And that looks like this. So we'll put that on there and crimp it in place. Here's our positive connection. And our negative connection. Those are just gonna tuck inside. This goes on top. Then we just just as long as the wiring here, just make sure it's out of the way. 
Now we can take our battery, we're in the off position, snap the battery in place, on, off, on. So right now both positions give us on. Now kind of the big trick here with this project is that we've got this 12 volt power supply and this is going to plug in here and as I do nothing is going to be different. It still is on in either position and we're going to put it off. Now let's plug this end into some live power. So we have off, on, off. Now this is the auto position so when power dies it automatically comes on. When we have power it stays off and in an emergency blackout the power is going to be cut so that's automatically going to bring the lights on for us in a blackout. Or we could use it for camping or whatever else just in the regular on position. So here's one last look at the insides. And I think what I'm gonna do is just use a little super glue to glue the lid on. Um, but if you really did still need to do something inside, uh, what else is kind of nice about this design is there's no bottom. Once you take the battery off, you can uh, still get at the wiring down in here. Um, so it is still accessible. So the last thing that I did was added a couple of drops of super glue and then closed up the project, put a speed clamp on top and waited for the glue to cure. So now we have a portable light that when the power goes out, it comes on automatically. Now, of course, it can still also be used as a general purpose battery operated work light. Great for camping, working on the car, uh, or just moving around the house during an emergency. And of course, I also did a real world test. I simply put the light up above my kitchen cabinets and plugged it in. And all I can say is, wow, it really lights up the area. Uh, more than enough light to uh, cook dinner or do any of the types of things that you might need to do uh, during a blackout emergency. We hope you like these videos. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and come check out 300mpg.org where we've got information on this and many other projects, including links, parts lists, and where you can get the STL files. And until next time, stay charged up.